the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Win for Hello, everyone, and welcome to Manila, the Philippines, for this very special day, the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And we're going to watch the third place game between USA and Canada. Number zero, Well, the lights are out, the flames are shooting, and the teams are running onto the Mall of Asia Arena Court. Uh, getting ready for today's game between Canada and the USA. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Mike Taylor once again to bring you the action. And Mike, it's uh, a lot of stake. And curiously, I always find this kind of odd. The team that finishes third often feels much better than the team that finishes second. Well, with all of these classification games that we've seen, teams want to put that positive finish to their World Cup story. Both of these teams entered with high hopes. For the USA falling short, it's easy to say, oh, you guys did not win the championship. You came up short. On the other side, Canada into the top four for the first time in history. There's a positive factor there. It's really interesting to see how both of these teams mentally approach this bronze medal game. Because Jeff, as you say, a medal would be an excellent accomplishment for every team in this tournament. Yeah, a 32-team tournament, and when you think about a team like Canada and you look back at the teams uh, that they've overcome to get to this point, it is an impressive list of scalps. They beat France, uh, they beat Latvia, Lebanon, Brazil. They lost to Brazil, in fact, and then they beat Spain and Slovenia. So, excuse me, they beat Slovenia and then they fell to Serbia. So, you know, they've already had a remarkable World Cup. And uh, the USA, well, I think everybody always expects them to reach the top of the podium. Uh, they arrived here certainly with a lot of ambition, high hopes, Tyrese Halliburton. And as you said, Mike, it's uh, you know still some an achievement to make it this far. And they do not have the advantage of continuity that a lot of these other teams have. And you can say the same thing about Canada in, in that regard. Well, both the United States and Canada play the NBA style which is different from FIBA, and this has proven to be a transition. It's easy to take shots at the United States because they did not win the championship, but again, the expectations are always there. I love what USA is doing with their roster and the direction that they're going. I think not winning and, and getting into this bronze medal game, they can use these experiences to understand what it takes to win on the FIBA level here. And as you say, the advantage for a lot of these European and international teams, the cores are together for a much longer time than USA. They, USA basketball has to figure that puzzle out. Well, USA going to be shorthanded today. Still no Brandon Ingram, and there will not be Jaron Jackson as well as Paolo Bancaro. Bancaro. You see today, 4.30 p.m. local time start for this game, and then Germany will be squaring off against Serbia uh, in the second game. And... Uh, here has been the road to the final. See the USA beat Italy, they fell to Germany, and Canada, after overcoming Slovenia, uh, they fell to Serbia. So, here we are, and we're gonna now have the pause in the commentary for the playing of the national anthems.
Please remain standing for the national anthem of USA. So this very important game about to take place here. We hear the national anthems and the players obviously, uh, most of them know each other. Many of them compete against each other in the NBA or they have done in college or past meetings. And uh, so they're meeting in midcourt. You see Olenek and uh, also for the USA, uh, Walker Kessler. Olenek going to be playing against his former college coach. In fact, Mark Few, who's an assistant. Uh, his former Gonzaga coach, Antonio Conde, Julio Naya, and Takaki Kato from Spain, Panama, and Japan are the referees for today. The crew chief is Antonio Conte. Conde? So, Conde. And uh, we don't see Anthony Edwards out there. We, we think the USA are going to be short handed without Brandon Ingram, but we'll focus on Canada first. Edwards is out pre-game, warm-up, pre-game shoot. Maybe he just went back to the locker room for a last-minute preparation. Okay, so for Canada, the starting five is going to be Lou Dort, Shea Gilgis, Alexander Dwight Powell, R.J. Barrett, and Dylan Brooks. With uh, Alexander Walker, who's been terrific, Edgem, uh, Alexander Olenek, Zach Eady, Phil Scrub, Trey Bell Haynes, all coming off the bench. Shea Gilgis Alexander had an outstanding tournament. Maybe wasn't quite as effective in the last game as we'd been accustomed to seeing. Well, he's been outstanding individually. He's been a great leader for this Canadian team, and, and now he starts to face game plans from outstanding opponents. And, you know, the combination of Shea Gilgis Alexander and R.J. Barrett have been terrific for this Canadian offensive attack. Again, these guys have guided Canada to next level success, and they're hungry in this bronze medal game. They'll power the offensive attack. Uh, Jordi Fernandez, who hails from Spain, but is uh, coaching in the NBA and was handed this team earlier this summer, has done a great job. And so we understood there were going to be nine players, but we don't see Anthony Edwards for the USA. But anyway, we'll see who's in the starting five. So he's still in the starting five, so I guess he's going to play Mikhail Bridges, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, and Walker Kessler. Halliburton, Johnson, Ingram, Banquero, Portis Jr., Jackson Jr., and Austin Reeves are all listed as substitutes, but we know Brandon Ingram is not playing with that upper respiratory infection. Anthony Edwards, 18.1 points per game at this World Cup. He's been fantastic. Yeah, he's been really impressive growing into the leadership role here for the United States. Single-handedly tried to help this team scoring-wise come back against Germany. He's been really creative and productive and mikhail bridges not well, just his d it's his offense yeah i love the fact he's a great two-way player he guards multiple positions has fantastic length can hit shots 
excellent putting on a ball on the floor, getting to the rim. He's been really impressive for the United States in all of their games. And Steve Kerr, the won the title as a player and was the assistant with Greg Popovich when they lost in the quarterfinals last time. Uh, but then they rebounded with the Olympic gold medal and he's now trying to get back to the podium. And I love what Coach Kerr and his staff have done with his team. And Carmelo Anthony, obviously, uh, one of the World Cup ambassadors, is here at midcourt. You know, the United States, this is a new roster, inexperienced players on the FIBA level, and they've got some excellent lessons here on the world stage. Coach Kerr has done a great job trying to communicate. There's Pau Gasol, the World Cup, another World Cup ambassador. Obviously, the former uh, the MVP back in 2006, All-Star 5 selection, uh, 2014, multiple titles with uh, Spain's national team over the years. Obviously, very, very popular everywhere he goes. Also had that long career in the NBA. Here's Anthony Edwards, so that's good. So he's made it. And uh, so we do have nine players for the USA. Again, he's such a big part of their offensive attack. They're already shorthanded. So the USA won this title after finishing third in 2006. They won it in 2010 with Kevin Durant leading the way, the MVP. There's Jip showing us how much time is left. They won the title. I mean, they were just incredible in 2014 uh, when they won that in Spain. I watched them at Bilbao, Barcelona, and Madrid, and there was just no stopping that USA team. But since then, uh, this is the second time now in a row that they haven't reached the top of the podium, and I think more than anything, it just speaks about the quality of basketball that's being played around the world. Yeah, and everybody will make excuses. Oh, it's not the top star players in the NBA. But the most important thing is that the adjustment and experience playing the FIBA game can be used to help this team understand what it takes to win in the future. So it's the seventh time they are appearing in the third place game at the FIBA Basketball World Cup, and it's the first time for Canada, obviously. And Jeff, with USA finishing seventh last World Cup, even though it's not the expectations to win a title, Again, you can see the progress for a young roster. Okay, hold on, go. Okay. Okay. Okay, I wait for it. Okay, wait for it. Take my time. Go. Oh. Well, hello, everybody, and good afternoon. We are in the Mall of Asia in Manila, the Philippines, for the third place game between Canada and the United States. Canada winning the opening tip. You see Walker Kessler in that starting five today. So some rim protection. Jaron Jackson not available, obviously. And Dylan Brooks backs his way down and gets the first bucket of the game. And Jeff, we've seen opponents target Brunson and Reeves in the post. Canada immediately gets the Brooks Brunson matchup for an easy two. Edwards goes baseline, and Kessler comes down with it, and he's fouled. Jeff, within the game today, this is great experience for a player like Walker Kessler Jr. You know, the third center on the roster, ordinarily not going to have too many minutes. Now he's into the starting lineup. And the good thing for him is he's in a style of play or in an opposing style of play that he's going to be comfortable with playing against Canada. So we're going to have already Bridges coming out of the game. And we don't know if he's ill, if he's hurt. Looked like a cut of bloody nose. So, okay, he's yeah, got the towel up against his nose. So this could be a physical game, no doubt. Canada, a lot of incentive for this team today, without doubt. 
first time trying to get to the podium. And Brooks comes out and strokes the three-pointer. You're going to see both teams in transition, run to the rim, fill the corners, and point guards try to pressure the rim. Great job there by Shea, finding teammate Brooks for the corner three, paint touch three. And now, the blocking foul has been called. So five nothing Canada. Josh Hart drawing the initial matchup on Shea Gilgis Alexander for the United States. Here's Ludort. Great delivery there from Shea. Left hand hook pass. Another paint touch three for Canada. Early execution, solid. Austin Reeves. Hey, Jeff, I think we'll see Austin Reeves really respond. No player likes to be targeted. It looks like Reeves came up with an ankle. He's hobbled as he goes up and down the sideline here. And well, Kessler throws it down. Coach Kerr checking with Reeves, giving him the thumbs up. Reeves toughing it out right now, early going. Barrett. Here's Powell. And Re look at Kessler's rim protection. Really good defense there, handling the pick and roll. And Edwards comes down. His attempt goes out. And this is uh, going to be a fun game, isn't it? Both teams want to get up and down in transition. We know that. There's the drive. Well, that's Kessler. That's what he brings to the table. That's what he's famous for, obviously, in his uh, really just right at the start of his career. Hey, Jeff. There's Bridges getting his treatment as well, so this will take him quite a knock. So in the early going here, you're down three key players to begin with. One of your best two-way players gets a bloody nose, and then one of your scoring guards tweaks an ankle. A little early game adversity for the United States. So at least he's able to come back into the game. Here goes Edwards. Passes it back outside to Bridges. off the rim looking wow. hard run the floor beautiful finish that was outstanding ball ahead in transition he led Hart right to the rim and Hart with a nice finish there Dylan Brooks that looks good it is he has really responded the last two games hasn't he yeah and there's a great contest there from Kessler but if you're gonna guard the pick and roll two on two we don't need to pull in as much and Barrett hits Brunson in the back. You see Hart pulls in too deep, can't recover to contest. You know that guy? Nav Bacha, Raptor super fan, and now Team Canada super fan. getting some treatment as well. USA getting blooded up here in the early going against Canada. Austin Reeves is going to come in. See, so it's going to be Edwards, Kessler, Brunson, Bridges, and Reeves. Remember, no Ingram, no Banquero, and no Jackson. Bridge is now on Shea Gilgis Alexander. Shea Gilgis Alexander. And he didn't get the block, but he affected the shot, Kessler. Dort, nice bounce pass. 
Hey, Jeff, what do we say? Saving the ball under our hoop. We want to throw it to the corner, not under the basket. Turnover. Easy Powell two. knocks it out of Brunson's hands. Now quickly up the door. Great finish there from Dort. Austin Reeves, that's good. And you can hear the Canada defenders yelling, ice, 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 trying to keep the ball on the side. If the big's gonna stay low, Reeves can step right into a shot. He did it perfectly right there. Gilgis Alexander, and despite Kessler, being there, Gilgis Alexander able to extend his left arm and bank it in. He went right into the shot blocker. Here goes Shea again. Dork. Brunson, another two for Brunson. Does such a good job with body control. Oh, Shea fell down, but was able to pass it over to R.J. Barrett. Drills the jumper. They weren't getting many open looks like that against Serbia, were they? No, Serbia's defense really did a great job with ball pressure, physicality, and contesting. Decides to drive, passes back outside. Shea on the way, and Reeves now has it taken away by Powell. Great play by Powell. Not to have the backcourt violation. Dork on target. Well, USA have seen enough. They're going to call timeout. And Mike, you know, it was really interesting, so, you know, to see, to hear the various. Uh, descriptions of the USA performance the other night against Germany. A lot of people taking issue with their defense. That's a great play by Powell. But you know, Jeff, in 300 team or USA games with NBA players, the most points they've ever given up is 113, and that happened against Germany. The second most was the 110 point performance where Lithuania beat them. So in the last two games, you can argue that they did not defend. However, I think it's more about them trying to outscore people and play at pace. If you see Walt going to get blocks, we got to veer to his. Got to veer to his. They're not going to finish over Walt. Only Shay. Everybody else looking to kick out of that. Right, here we go. Tyrese, Austin, Mikhail, Aaron, and Bobby. Right. They got to feel us down there. We're going to blitz Shay the next time, Bobby, yes. with, just with you, with the five man. Okay. Let, let, let right. Powell come, come to you. You ain't got to go up high. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go. Angle pop. Angle pop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Jeff, you heard the players discussing the veer. This is two on two covering the pick and roll. As the ball handler Shea gets into the paint, Walker Kessler wants to step to it. You see here passes that led to the basket, the team comparison. USA finishing plays well, Canada finishing plays well. Numbers one and two setting teammates up extremely well. But getting back to the defense, they want to try to guard two on two, and the veer is an emergency switch as the shot blocker steps to the ball. They don't want to pull in off the three-point shooters, which we've seen Canada take advantage of early in the game. Edwards, here's the jump shot. Now they look for a trap on this next pick and roll with Shea Gilders, Alexander, and Portis. Here goes RJ. Great finish from Barrett again, getting a bucket. Here's Portis. He gets rejected by Kelly Olenek. And he goes right back at him. You love the physicality that Portis brings. Now 
Alexander Walker a little deep. RJ Barrett and continues to shoot it well. RJ. So again, Portis sits in a drop the last two plays. Fouls pass. Oh boy, the back door, and then he's fouled by Dort. Melvin Edgem is going to come in. So that was the foul that was called on Lou Dort. Third team foul. It's incredible if you think about it, Mike. I mean, it's uh, the buildup to this tournament. You think you go back through all the qualifiers all over the world. You know, there's various windows, various roster changes and shakeups and all those tough decisions that coaches have to make. and. You know, none of the USA players uh, appeared in, in the qualifiers, did they? No, the NBA seasons are going on. So, you know, they, they kind of piece together a roster in a short time. And again, as we said, this is a big disadvantage compared to the European teams that are together developing their core and knowing how to play together. Although there are windows where they could play in the summer. Now Olenek spins, gets inside, banks it in. And Jeff, again, it's been a constant theme when the USA switches, teams are targeting the a matchup advantage with reason to post. And if you're going to take a foul, don't take it like this. Two hands, soft, easy finish for Olenek. You've got to have more physicality. If that's the case, let him score and go attack down the other end. But, you know, you look at Reeves, he's a great player. He's outstanding talent. He's been targeted by a lot of these international teams. And again, you expect him to come out and really respond on the offensive end today. There's the lob. And Portis decides to go old school and just the old school alley. -oop. And that's great decision making from Portis. He didn't force a shot. He found a teammate to cooperate with and ended up with the pick and roll lob at the rim. There was an example of the switch we talked about. Linick able to get it to edge him, and he knocks it down. And again, Jeff, a defensive discipline. Hart has pulled in off his shooter twice in the early going here. If you're switching screens, you don't have to pull in and help. Board is missing. Gonna say down 13. Alexander Walker and an offensive foul has been called. So it's on Olenek. Olenek just tried to stop in the lane and set some traffic to get Nikhil. Alexander Walker to the rim. Too much contact for the officials. Phil Scrub also in the game for Canada, number 23. Cam Johnson coming into the game. Phil Scrub has been one of these Canada players that just forever shows up for the national team. He played at the last World Cup. Well, there's two Scrub brothers that are really well Thomas. respected. Thomas and here's Phil. Both have done really well internationally. Both also have played in the rising Canadian Elite Basketball League, which is, I think, a great development for the game basketball in Canada. The Scrub Brothers have been a big part of the Niagara River Lions, Ottawa Blackjack teams. And then they also play with uh, leading clubs in, uh, with big clubs in Europe. Obradoiro at the ACB, for example. The top, arguably the top league in, uh, in Europe, Spain. I think people are coming around understanding how good the game is in Europe. Here is Edgem having it knocked out of his hands by Halliburton. Right, Reeves. Oh. Didn't turn it over. A lot of time. Halliburton to the corner. Cam Johnson. Portis. Boy, that was nice patience. Cannon will try to hold it for one here, I'd assume. Portis is making a positive difference, isn't he? Six points. Go, 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 go. 
Alexander Walker. And that's how it finishes. So Canada with a nine point advantage, 34 points. Perhaps more questions being asked about the USA defense. I don't know. Uh, from a rebounding standpoint, it's eight to seven in favor of the USA. Canada lead at 34 25. So Canada comes out shooting 62% from the field. As you see, six for 11 from three. 55%, but you know, again, 11 assists for Canada. My concern for the United States, Chef, is, again, you're playing at pace, but you're not really defending people. The switching, teams are targeting and getting mismatches, getting advantages. You want to see the USA dig in. It's too comfortable. They're accepting playing from behind in this first quarter. You'd love to see them come out and really get put a couple defensive stops together so that they can create some transition opportunities for themselves. Well, these are the highlights early on. Kessler was in the game. Yeah, one, one comment that I read as like a main part of the, you know, the, the reflection on that story uh, of the, the loss to Germany was that USA just didn't bring enough big guys. Well, because they have been getting out rebounded, but we've talked about this. The rebounding isn't just size, it's about technique and boxing out. Here's Jip. Scan in that barcode, folks, and you will get what you need. At courtside 1891, and everything to follow this FIBA Basketball World Cup, you'll find it there. So. Download 1891 app for the latest news, scores, videos, games, and much more from the world of international basketball. 365 days. But Jeff, I love Josh Hart as a player. Uh, it, you know, on the, in the FIBA level, he, he plays so hard, he's so versatile, he makes so many winning plays. The issue for the United States is they've accepted switching so much. And the point can be, you know, you've got to dig in and play really solid defense to get stops. We see the example of Serbia, their defensive discipline, their physicality, their team toughness. Zach and, Eady's checked into the game. Nice shot from Hart. But in general, the United States has tried to outscore people and not really had the commitment of blocking out and rebounding. They're just turning and trying to use their athleticism to go get the ball. And, you know, it may be old school to put a body on somebody, but this is fundamental winning basketball, and this is what it's going to take for the United States to be committed to block out and rebound on this stage. And, Jeff, opponents are trying to control tempo on the USA. They're trying to dictate the game to them. Beautiful delivery from Halliburton. One way the USA can fight that is if you get defensive stops and finish possessions with defensive rebounds, you can create transition opportunities. Oh, there was the lob to Edie. College player at Purdue. There's Reeves missing deep, and look at the size of Zach Edie just goes up and brings it down. Now a foul on Olenek pushing off to get position. Again, give Reeves credit here. He's getting caught in some disadvantaged situations and he's being really physical. You can see Olenek just using his arms too much. You gotta be really careful. Officials are looking at that mismatch. If you're the big guy, sometimes they will keep their eyes on it and make sure that there's no advantage with your hands. Well, they caught a foul here as Reeves penetrated on Zach Eady. Push. And if you are Austin Reeves and you know teams are targeting you, you got to try to win that matchup by being so good offensively that you win that battle. So it's great to see him responding aggressively, trying to make some plays down at this end. Well, then it goes out. Uh, Dylan Brooks on the floor. Here's Reeves. And the foul called as well on Shea Gilgis Alexander. You're welcome. Manila has been wonderful, Jeff. Manila has indeed been 
It's been a little hot, I have to admit, a little humid. But very Sticky. friendly people. Sticky. Look at look at Reeves though, just uh, so gifted offensively. And this is the point. Even the best players in the world have strengths and limitations, but they know how to play to their strengths and emphasize them on the floor. Halliburton boots the ball into the second row. And you see after free throws, the United Media States row. continues with the one, two, two. That's the only one. That ball is caught by Dayon. Works uh, for FIBA. I thought he was going to head it back onto the court. Here goes Hart sailing through the air. And that was a great acceleration to the rim. Hart pressures the rim and finishes. But down this end, Dylan Brooks has to create a better shot for his team. Well, USA have definitely figured some things out here. The Americans who are down 13 now have a chance to take the lead. Cam Johnson, you can count it! Hey Jeff, that's a great sight to see. Cam struggled to find his rhythm in earlier games and now they're gonna be relying on him out here and he hits a big transition three to give the United States the lead. Here again, Cam Johnson. How many times have we seen Halliburton just make outstanding passes in transition? He he plays with a flair, sees the floor so well, and look at the enthusiasm. I love what I've seen out of Halliburton here. Twenty-one bench points for the USA. That's where a lot of their production is coming from today. And look at that, they're getting some good looks now in the paint. Really good execution. Again, team shorthanded. You know, the guys can get a good rhythm for the game. They started slow, but again, you love this this surge here, 13 to two in the second quarter. Great response from the United States. Let's don't forget also these two teams will be at uh, the Olympics next year. And that's really exciting for both countries. Obviously, it's almost a given for the USA expected but Canada, it's a great accomplishment for Canada basketball. I mean, if you can go to the FIBA Basketball World Cup and, and come out of it with an Olympic berth, that's already a major achievement. Yeah, and again, people are just looking at the game here. But, Jeff, those, those type of achievements are really big for basketball in different countries. And both oh. of these teams have done it, so that's fantastic. Gilgis Alexander. There is Powell. That's a corral it. And what I love about the United States right now is the team rebounding. Portis. Powell called. Lou Dort. And Portis with his energy sprints the floor, transition, and creates the mismatch advantage. Dort battling physical, but at a size disadvantage, fouls. You see five USA defenders committed to rebounding. When they add the physical blockouts, the physicality part, they're doing everything they can. Right now, 11 to eight rebounds in favor of the United States. Only two offensive rebounds allowed. So pretty good execution controlling the defensive boards in the early going. USA outscoring Canada 15 to two in the second quarter. And uh, Dort just missed a, what looked like a pretty makeable shot there. Hart explodes the other end, and Dylan Brooks does a great job, reaches in, it goes off of Hart. Watch this. Yep, no foul there. Might have got him a little bit on the hand, but yeah. got but a lot of ball. Hey, Jimmy looked... Goldstein, super fan from the Los Angeles Lakers, here to see you. Well, Jeff, I was going to say, don't you have a jacket like that? I should have worn today. That's a big bucket, Brooks. 
and showing some leadership for this Canada team. I've been impressed by him. Yeah, he plays both ends. He's an agitator, but he's got very supreme confidence. Oh, nice pass. Halliburton wide open. I think he had too much time. He did. He tried to find the seams on the shot on the ball. Slowed him down. Shea takes the contact in one. Coming, Canada back in front. And Jeff, what pace into the lane, under control, at his speed, draws the contact and finishes. Outstanding play and transition. Shea Gilgis Alexander, look, it's just so smooth. It's so natural for him. Do you think uh, Jimmy Goldstein, the super fan from the Lakers, hangs out with the super fan from Toronto? After the games? Wouldn't that be awesome if they met somewhere in Manila and just discussed super fandom things? Well, speaking of uh, leading figures here uh, from federations, Canada's president is there. Halliburton missing. That was Michael Bartlett, president and CEO of uh, Canada Basketball. There is a nice <laughs> shot by Shea Gilgis Alexander once again, and the Canada fans now starting to celebrate a little bit. Jeff, that was a teardrop. Mikael Bridges answers. I think he's been able to take that thing out of his nostril because the, the blood stopped. RJ. Oh. Oh, RJ misses. Lou Dort missed the layup as well. But that was really makeable. Brunson drives in. So again, we got New York Nick practice competition going on here. Bragging rights. Do you Both. think the whistle would blow on that in the NBA? I mean, let's take a look here. Here's the beautiful play here from Mikael Bridges. Nice pull up, beautiful touch. I want to see the teardrop though from Shea. Well, did not get that one to drop. And here's Anthony Edwards. This pass intended for Brunson, but it goes out of bounds. And again, Jeff, it's a good idea. Brunson running to the corner. Edwards has the right idea to get him the ball, just needs to make a better pass on time, on target. USA in there, 1-2-2, two, two, full court pressure. RJ Barrett. Another good look from Barrett. Paint touch three, just rimmed out. Bridges again. You so know, Canada, consistent. Canada sits sits in their zone. USA sits in their zone, and players just play. Great ba baseline cut from Bridges. Easy two. Brooks again driving. I tell you, he is really playing well. And that's against an elite rim protector in Kessler as well. Halliburton drives in. There's Kessler. And Jeff, in that situation, you know, is it possible for Kessler to tip it back in and not have to come down? Here's this extension and finish from Dylan Brooks. Beautiful with the left hand. Edwards with a short jumper. Attacking Powell in the drop, inside out dribble to freeze him, and then just elevates to extension, easy two. Shea not able to knock it down. Look at Bridges hustle, but Brooks beats him to it, and that's a tough pass by Brooks. Wow. This time Brooks doesn't get it to drop. And 
Brian Brooks definitely bumped Edwards that time. Remember watching, oh, there's Carmelo Anthony sizing up the players. He's going to hear the applause. FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 ambassador. Jeff, that was the United States' first free throw miss. They were nine for nine. Doing a very good job getting to the free throw line. They've also stabilized their defending the three-point line in the half court. Not pulling in as much, having better defensive discipline in tune with their pick and roll coverages. Sue Bird, World Cup 2026 ambassador, the people women's World Cup 2026 ambassador. She was uh, obviously needs no introduction in terms of what she accomplished on the court for so many years for the USA. I mean, she might just be, uh, she and Tarazi for me were just like the epitome of just outstanding players. She was honored here in the last game. A nice award, oh, just beautiful, beautiful painting. I mean, she was tough. Yeah, I mean, you didn't again, want to get into a scrap with her. Yeah, the, the there's Pal Gasol as well, FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 ambassador. Legendary players in front of us, Jeff. Yeah, amazing. Obviously, with Spain, I mean, he is one of the most loved people. Well, forget sports figures. Yeah, he's not only a great basketball player, but a very intelligent person. You know doing many good things in, in his life on and off the floor. He was going to study medicine, wasn't he? Yeah. Had he not played basketball. And he's been such a big part of the golden generation of Spain and then championship teams with the Lakers. His brother, Mark Gasol, obviously, won the NBA title with uh, Toronto. Also played many years for Spain. Was in the All-Star 5 at the last World Cup that Spain won, 2019. Yes, Here's I, Brooks. I remember that well. Uh, Kessler called for the foul. It's funny, Bridges. Look at this. Well, Jeff, the block, got on the, arm. the block happened first, and then the contact happened after the release. So. You know, if you're the officials, you can definitely argue there's contact on the shooting arm, but the block took place first and Kessler went straight up. So tough call for the United States. And of course, Luis Scola, the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 ambassador. And uh, just a, an incredible person as well. I mean, it, it was difficult to get him out of the Argentina shirt. That's for sure. He played forever. Look at that. Good job, Jalen Brunson. But Jeff, you know what you love about Scola, Gasol, Mello, Sue Bird? Like, they're here. Yeah. They love the game. They want to be at the game. They want to see these teams play, representing the game after fantastic careers. Uh, definitely one of the great moments for Scola was when he played his last second for Argentina at the Tokyo Olympics and Sergio Hernandez, Hernandez pulled him out of the game and I mean Australia's bench stood up walked on the court all of the Australians applauded a salute Just to an a incredible legend. moment yeah. won the Olympic gold medal in 2004 here goes Tyrese Halliburton and oh! how about that that would have been good great follow by Walker Kessler enough about the past let's talk about the present and Walker Kessler, some hops, look at that, going up, and he fouls. Shea helps him up. Again, Shea Gilgis-Alexander is so crafty, changing speeds, and then uses his length. He got in deep, but here's the great defense from Halliburton, and so much enthusiasm in transition, sets his teammate up. They missed the dunk 
but look at the hustle from Walker Kessler Jr. We said last time maybe he could have tipped it in. This time he does, completes the play. But with Kessler picking up his second foul, now your biggest body leaves the floor. And Jeff, Jeff, my, my motivation to Team USA would be block out, rebound, and get in transition so you can make plays like that. Have fun. The, the excitement, the enthusiasm. Work hard on D and create those opportunities for yourself. Yeah, that would definitely be a good message. I think it would be received. Here goes Anthony Edwards. Oh. Again, you, you see so many players decelerate with strong footwork at the rim and then have that touch. Great play, Anthony Edwards. Look at Shea Gilgis Alexander. Goodness me. And you see, he just turns the corner. Portis has to contain, cannot get beat and allow it to turn the corner. Now that's easier said than done. Edwards off the glass. Nope. Alexander Walker bats it out to RJ. Here he goes. Oh. And just uh, tried to do too much there. Well, Brunson knows his moves from the Knicks. He knew it was coming. Reeves, no success trying to get the line. Now here goes Shea to the corner. R.J. Barrett and his Knicks teammate <laughs> Brunson running at him. So it's going to be Shea's turn. Ten on the shot clock. Dylan Brooks, you can count it. And you could see Shea Gilgis Alexander turned to post up Reeves. Brunson ran to double at him. Portis alertly rotated, but it was buckets for Dylan Brooks. Tough drive, Brunson, but he doesn't score. Canada up one, trying to go to halftime with the lead, and Austin Reeves call for the foul. He's saying that. Shea Gilgis Alexander tried to hook him. Well, this is what some of these crafty playmakers do. But again, you're not upset if the United States it allows you to set the defense here. Let's see if Canada tries to execute a two for one situation here from the sideline. 48 seconds and a half. Brooks again. Wow. And that's it. Now the USA can two for one back at him. Twenty-one points for Brooks. And Bridges knocked away. Brooks is looking like the MVP of the game, isn't he? Yeah, he's playing well. Point. So ten seconds on the shot clock, end line inbound, twenty-three seconds in the half. Notice how Brunson's not in position yet. He waited for his team to get set before the referee gave him the ball. Brunson gets deep and gets it to go. So Canada, again, will try to have the last shot. Shea gives it up to Alexander Walker, and that's all. Well, good opportunity. It was by the wayside. And Canada, nevertheless, have the lead at the break, 58-56 against the United States. Mike, any numbers that stand out yeah, to you? Both teams shooting well offensively. Nine threes for Canada helped them to a good start, 50%. Only three of nine for the USA, but good job making free throws from the United States. Rebounding numbers are key, 19 to 16, and the USA have only allowed four offensive boards. That's excellent. 14 assists for Canada, very positive. 28 to 20 points in the paint for the USA. Bench points, 23 to 8, so the USA getting good contributions from everyone on their roster. As you said, Brooks has played really well in his first half with 21. Clay Gilders, Alexander, 11 and 5. Bobby Portis Jr. and Austin Reeves with 10 apiece for the USA. So look at the key players. Shea with 11 points, one rebound. Of course, uh, Dylan Brooks is leading the team in scoring nine points for Anthony Edwards, three of seven. 
inside New York to rebounds. How much are they missing Brandon Ingram and uh, also Jackson? Well, one of the strengths of the United States coming into the World Cup was and their Bank depth. Carroll. Yeah. They miss Ben Carroll because he's been a key to their switching one through five lineup as a small five. You know, Ingram, they miss his individual scoring. And Jaron Jackson Jr., again, would be in a size matchup that could change the game here. Um, but overall, I think it's been a really solid effort from both teams. The United States made some adjustments to lock down the, the three-point shooting, the three-point line from Canada early. And everything is in a, in a good position. 58-56 for Canada. But you can see the teams making runs at each other. Yeah, this one's far from decided. I mean, it's, um, again, Mike, I can't emphasize enough. You don't want to leave the World Cup with a loss. No, you want to finish with a positive, finish on a high. Both of these teams have accomplished so much. Again, the mentality for the USA, they are doing well. The expectations are always so high. It's like you have to win the championship. It just doesn't always happen like that. I think there's so many valuable lessons for the United States to grow from and to understand what it takes to win with these next generation players. Dylan Brooks has again really been uh, not just an agitator, he has been producing on both ends of the floor. Been a terrific performance by him. 58-56, Canada lead USA at halftime. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. break with a two-point lead. Well, Dobro Jutro, Dobro Dan, Dobro Vecce. Oh, oh what a shot from Paco Cruz. He was literally out of bounds and just has such a golden feel for the ball. Oh, Procedo, what are you doing? Let's 
symbolic of the shooting we've seen from Venezuela this first half. From the three-point line, 12 of 25 in the three-quarter. Lick bomb, nothing but net. Way in the flush. That is unbelievable. These guys will be legends in their own country, but also in the international basketball world forever. Well, Dylan Brooks, the agitator. I guess he is agitating the USA right now, isn't he? 21 points, not just on defense. He's getting it done on offense. The five for five threes is a difference. He's got supreme self-confidence, and he's demonstrating it right now. Sometimes he's, you know, talked his way into some situations, proclaiming himself the LeBron stopper, proclaiming himself the best defender in the world. That's, that's pretty confident, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, but again, don't let that stuff detract from you know, his quality play and what he does. He's an outstanding defender, and when he can be productive as well, he's he's really, really good. Again, he's one of those guys that when you play against him, you really don't like it, but when you play with him, he's a great teammate. See where he made his shots, all five threes from, well, four from one side of the court, and then one right up at the top. and. How about this, Portis leading the team in scoring. Yeah, again, Bobby Portis has given the USA so much energy, running the floor in transition, being physical at the rim, rebounding. You know, he's. it's great to see him get some scoring opportunities while the USA is missing some players on the roster that have been ahead of him. He's made good decisions out on the floor. He's worked really hard, and he's had a very, very good first half. He was kind of like left on the bench until the second half for games, wasn't he, early on? Well, he was he was a backup big, and he could play the four and the five. His role on the team was supporting, and he did a very good job supporting, and now he's getting more opportunity here. And you can see sticking to his strengths, making plays in the paint, but you see his energy. He, Josh Hart and Bobby Portis have brought so much energy to this team, and I think that's been so positive throughout this entire World Cup. Yeah, I really like I really like the presence that he has out there when he's in the game. So in Manila, the Philippines, this is the Mall of Asia Arena next to the biggest mall in Asia, the Mall of Asia. And you like the mall. I got lost. It's, I was scared. Some people go between games. Yeah, I was like, we better get it back. You I'm, know, we need to retrace our steps, Jeff. You know, it's like, hey, what were we looking for? We were looking for a famous uh, cookie. Most cookies, and then people felt so bad that we couldn't find it, they started bringing them to us. And yes. Thank you for FIBA and the wonderful people here. But, I mean, 9 of 18 from deep. Well, if they keep shooting it well. Well, but. you're so worried about the pick and roll with Shea Gilders Alexander that they were pulling in from their help side team defensive positions, and they pulled in too deep and couldn't recover to contest and in the second quarter they did a better job with their position discipline again if you guard the pick and roll with veer backs and emergency switches in certain ways with two on two you can maintain coverage of your three-point line so again I, I guess we know pretty much which candidate you know the majority of the Canadian players that'll be at the Olympics and that'll be a big question for the USA which ones are also included in the Olympic squad, if any. You just don't know. But this is the big challenge for USA basketball. You know, a national team, a federation from a different country, let's say from my experience in Poland, we would have a player pool. And through the years, we had one NBA player, Martin Gortat. Now they have Jeremy Sohan. But you, you know your players are there. They're EuroLeague players. They're, you know, basketball Champions League players. They're ACV. They're... You're playing in different countries, but they're always available for your windows. They're always available for your campaign. And 
when you build that core over years, you become a really tough team that can compete on these high levels. And I think this is one of the advantages Europe has at these World Cup and Olympics. This is why some of these national teams are so good. Now, the problem for the United States is, or the challenge, the NBA season is, you know, in full swing. And while you have great talent, the talent doesn't play together often enough. Yeah, that's one issue, but um, they still put good teams out there. There's no doubt about that. And, it's you know, just the level of excellence that you expect. Well, it perhaps again, hasn't been there this time. Because players need to learn how to play together. You can piece together talented players, but they need to respond to game adversity and game situations in a team way. And this is the problem that when you just piece it together and have a couple weeks to prepare, I think Coach Kerr and his staff have done a fantastic job, but the expectations are extremely high for USA basketball. And just revisit, so when you coached Poland, you would coach in windows, uh, you would coach, you would have summertime together. Yeah, we had the, my first three years, we had the former campaigns in the summer, building up for Eurobasket three summers together of basically two months. And then, you know, when it changed to the windows, we had a core established and we got very, very good at preparing our team in a short time because everyone understood the system, the terminology, and we got to a great depth of system, which was an advantage for us. It's hard for the United States to do that despite their fantastic talent. And Jeff, basketball's a team game. You have to play together and this is, the challenge for them to learn it, learn to play together on a high level in a short time. Josh on Barrett, Walker on top. We're gonna blitz Che one time. One time, and then we'll go red, red to hit after that. But we're only hitting Shea, right? We're not hitting anybody else. Elbow dribble, and you handle. Walk, go get Jalen. DHO with Mikhail, walk, you follow, you die. Right, here we go, fellas. Let's start. One, two, three, one, two, three. And Jeff, it's so great to go into those timeouts. Coach Kerr wants to trap Shea Gilgis Alexander. He called it earlier in the game. They did not execute it, so he's going back to it to give him a different look. Jeff is back in the house. Looks like he might be overheating a little bit. Yeah, I'm surprised. Is he okay? It's been a long tournament. He's got to be careful. There's a drone in here as well. Doesn't want to hit that. There he is. Just stay there for a while, Jim. Where is the mechanic? Maybe he's uh, needs an oil change. He does. Thirty-two team tournament has culminated with this and. Uh, Pretty incredible when you think an All-American third place game. And it's going to be hot here in the final 20 minutes, I suspect. Is Shea Gilgis Alexander trappable? That's the question. That is a great question, Jeff. Second half action is underway. Canada on top, 58-56 against the USA, and they've got possession. Dylan Brooks drives in, puts it up and in. 23 points for Dylan Brooks. Shot clock winding down. Bridges, his pass stolen by Brooks. Great bounce pass to Shea! Great start for Canada. Two easy layups. Dylan Brooks involved with both plays. I mean, he is just doing it all. Yeah, he's responded to this challenge today. Not an easy game to get motivated for. He's really been ready to play here in this third place game. I think from the USA standpoint, maybe. I'm pretty sure Canada were fired up for this. Oh, look at this. And 
and Edwards loses the dribble, goes out of bounds. It's going to stay at this end. Canada not happy about that. And even though there's some questions, should they challenge it? Oh, I mean, it went bet between the arm and the waist, so they are going to challenge it. Okay. So they're going to use their one challenge. You know, 95% of the head coaching challenges, I understand, having spoken to the referees, are regarding out-of-bounds calls. Let's listen. Okay, let's check the last player who touched the ball out of bounds. Uh, let me see. So first was, now it's uh, white. Okay, let me see. This, this is uh, white. White, white, white. And now, it is white, 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 white. The ball didn't, didn't change the, the, didn't change the speed movement, okay? Seems to be it's wide, 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 no idea. So it's a red ball, okay? Red ball, basically. Red ball, okay, good. Thank you. Okay, we confirm. We changed the decision. Conclusive. I guess any successful challenge is a good challenge. Certainly. Even and if they don't have it later in the game. Yeah, and again, you theoretically want to hold it on to the more impactful possession later in winning time in the game but they win they get the ball and now they look to build on their six-point lead Mike the Toronto super fan just walked past us what what do you have to do to be a super fan I'm a pretty big fan of some things here is Lou Dort Wow great rebound Jeff you are an Atlanta Braves super fan oh look at that Kessler Great job running to the rim in transition and beautiful ball ahead pass from Brunson. So is Anthony Edwards. He is an Atlanta Braves super fan as well. You loved it when he wore his hat yes, I did. into the, the press, press conference. conference. All these guys, tremendous athletes, played multiple sports. Here's Dylan Brooks. Shall we just go ahead and write MVP beside his name? Yeah, he's been outstanding up to 26 points, giving great defensive effort. <laughs> Javon Shepard is next to us. Here's Jalen Brunson, who had played for Canada. He's amazed by how well he's shooting. Now he's, he's right with this national team right now. He's also in Manila doing commentary. Here is Shea Gilgis Alexander off the rim. Here's Bridges now. Well, it's, remember, Canada led by 13. In the first half, USA came back to take the lead, but then Canada led at halftime. Here's Edwards to Bridges. Oh, look at the fight for the rebound. Hart goes down. Great effort from Hart and Lou Dort helped him up. Great sportsmanship between these teams. Many players play against each other all season. Look at Brooks. Bridges takes it the other way. And you can count it. You know, Jeff, as we see Bridges push and transition the last couple plays and get to the line, one point we want to make, you know, even though these are elite athletes and great ball handlers, watch when Serbia pressures the ball and their pickup point in transition defense. They stop the ball as close to half court and slow down the game. And when you watch Canada and the USA play, you know, part of it is elite talent, but defensively, they need to do a better job of stopping the ball early, having stronger oh. transition defense. Wow, that's a very unusual miss for Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's right there. Edwards and USA get two more back and Jordy Fernandez calls timeout. Coach Spo over there applauding the troops as they come over to get some instruction, Edwards. And even there, Jeff, you see Edwards pushes the ball up. He's not really engaged until about the 15 foot mark. So Canada called the timeout. Let's go down to their bench. See if we can listen in. 
remember, remember, with the pressure, when, we want, when I want is fall to the middle, touch the paint, kick it, and have offensive rebounding. If we shoot those threes when we have bodies on the boards, those are good threes for us. We're shooting, I'm throwing ahead and shooting, and nobody's there, right? So that is the difference between a good shot for us or not a good shot. If we don't have the spots filled, we don't have rebounders, that's not a good shot. We got tons of pain. We're gonna go horns chest with Dylan here, uh, Shea, RJ. Yeah. yeah, star Dwight, uh, Dylan here, Dwight here. All right, you guys cross, screen and Shea, explore. Flair, if you don't have it, RJ, turn the corner. Who cut, you drift. Hey, come on now, come on. Defense on three, one, two, three. Anthony Edwards, if I, if you're asking me who's been the best player for this team, or maybe has had the, most, the greatest impact, let's put it that way, I would say Anthony Edwards. Yeah, he's been fantastic for the USA. There was the hopes and expectations he could grow into a team leader, a leading scorer, a go-to guy, and he's done it. He's been outstanding on both ends, scoring, playmaking, defending, rising star, a star already, Anthony Edwards. And talking about stars, R.J. Barrett buries the three-pointer. Shea Gilgis-Alexander gets a lot of the attention, but R.J. Barrett has also had an excellent World Cup. Edwards plays for Chris Finch, right? Minnesota? Yes, he does. Uh, remember it, Finch in the old days when he was coaching in England? Sheffield Sharks' finest. Amazing uh, career, former Great Britain coach as well at the Olympics. Here is... Brunson. Oh. Wow. Well, you just got to tip your hat to him. I mean, what a finisher at his size and stature. Such a great player, isn't he? I mean, it feels like the Knicks got really lucky to get him. Man. <laughs> I mean, he's awesome. You love his ability to finish, post up, decision making. High character guy. Yeah. There is Brooks, hands it off to Powell. By Jeff, Brooks defending, Brooks hitting threes, Brooks making a play in the paint. Outstanding. Yeah, he's just doing it all. Brunson. Well, now Brunson's assuming the mantle of leadership here. He's got 13, a team high. Jay into the paint. Ooh, good. Catch and pass. Look at that. Edwards, I mean, the skill, the uh, the talent, the athleticism of heart. Unbelievable. You got to appreciate that. And the, the competitiveness, the toughness. So the last few possessions, Brunson establishes scoring in the paint. Now he gets to the rim and kicks it out. Look at Shea go. Beautiful and paint touch three. between the legs. So that foul called on Bridges. <laughs> what sign is that? I don't Break know. Break the binoculars? That, yeah, it's, it's a take a look at that one. But, you know, Jordy's last time out was an outstanding one. He clearly, calmly defined for his team the difference between a good shot and a bad shot, the type of three they wanted, you know, talking about get a paint touch first so that we can have certain players in rebounding position. You know, again, valuing the type of shot creation for his team, that's outstanding coaching. He's now telling all the referees to look out for the elbows from the U.S. That's also outstanding coaching. Man. Here's Edwards flying in. He gets blocked by Powell. Halliburton, 
And his shot blocked out of bounds. Good job. I mean, just a uh, arm straight up. Bridges puts it up from deep. And there's one time Brooks fell asleep. He was worried about the screening inside and the old corner three, sneaky corner three. Oh, Che again. Oh my goodness. Slippery. Yeah, I mean, crafty. They ran a double at him. He shot fakes and look at this, step through. Oh. Extension with the left off the glass. Beautiful. He's not he's not just going up against any player. I, I mean, mean that is what Walker Kessler does for a living. Yeah, he blocks shots and he has elite length and rim protection. But what we're seeing from Brunson, what we're seeing from Shea Gilgis Alexander, the ability to create great shots for themselves in traffic, in the paint, individual talent, individual IQ. Oh, look at that, Alexander Walker. And now they could talk about it potentially and upgrade it. Let's see if they, the referees get together on this. Is this an unsportsmanlike? Oh, I think it is. Well, Jeff, if they should discuss it, it's not really a play on the ball. They're going to go look at it. Yeah, I I'm pretty think, sure they're going to upgrade it. But. Yeah, I think this is a good decision from the cool. officials. You know, this is unintentional from Portis. It's a loose ball scramble, but I think he gets his hands Please. caught. Which kind of contact we have in case of upgrade or downgrade the situation? Okay, go back. Stay. Give me uh, this camera. This camera, okay? Just a normal speed, okay? This. Yeah. So. We have the go back. Let's see any other. We have the, this one, okay? The main Here and this is a grab. Yeah. So we have this grab, and then he's from Tatki. Okay, he's just open up. Yeah. The contact is a is a, is a going, and then we have this grab. Okay. Yeah. So it's like it's not defended. Yeah. It's not player, no other opening, okay? So we go with a sport like foul, one, nine wide, okay? And red one is shooting two, yeah? Good. So Bobby Portis Jr. with the unsportsmanlike foul. It's great to be able to listen to the referees, just kind of look at the videos. We're looking at them and we're listening to them. Yeah, and they're doing an excellent job there, communicating, cooperating, and then getting it right. It's unfortunate for Portis. It was a loose ball. He just got his hands caught and pulled. But again, at the end of the day, you want the officials to get it right. They did here in this case, as they have so often throughout the tournament. Alexander Walker was really terrific the other day yeah again attacking the basket hitting shots here he blows up the handoff knifing through creating the turnover again he is a key role player for this Canada team that has done very very well Jeff one thing about the United States here they're too comfortable exchanging baskets Yeah, 10 points against Serbia. Well, here's Dylan Brooks. Oh, finally misses from three-point range. And a great block out from Bobby Portis. I'd love to see that, Bobby. Edwards. And they call the blocking foul on Olenek. Well, ball doesn't lie. Again, 
Anthony Edwards and the USA is 12 of 14 from the free throw line today. You know, he does such a good job initiating contact. But we go back, one, two, two pressure here. Again, the USA is too comfortable to just trade baskets with people. We need to see some defensive energy here to get a stop. RJ Barrett decides to go inside and has success. Barrett using his size on Reeves, gets an easy basket at the rim. Edwards, mid-range, nice one. Seventeen points for Edwards. Alexander Walker takes the pass from his cousin, now gets it over to Olenek. It's good! And his front court three-point shooting stretches the floor. Canada 12 and 25 from three-point range. Here's Portis. Great step up screen, pocket pass and finish. Nice play, Portis. RJ misses that one. Now here's Reeves, a little bit of showtime. He goes down, traveling is the call on Austin Reeves. Look at this. And again, you'd love to see the United States run the floor with spacing. Spacing gives an offense a clear picture, both in the half court and in transition. That time, of the lanes were not as defined. Austin dribbles into traffic. Blue door back in the game. Reeves trying to take it away from R.J. Barrett. Bounce pass, Alexander Walker. Threes are falling for Canada. Excellent work. Portis pushed down low. What's your favorite basketball movie, Mike? You must have a whole slew of. Oh, there's there's many. I think I enjoyed Hustle uh, recently, last year, a year before. Uh, Adam Sandler's movie, Scout for the Sixers. And again, Anthony Edwards was a key role in that. Who knew he could act like that? Uh, you know, classic Hoosiers. Barry, another one for Edwards. Hoosiers for me takes the cake, I think. Look at Grant Hill, managing director of this uh, USA national team. Here's RJ Barrett. You know, Jeff, I also enjoyed blue chips back in the day. I thought maybe you'd like Jackie Moon. Here goes oh. Johnson into the paint. Yeah, you know, semi-pro is classic. Some of the basketball scenes. Andre, Andre 3000 and Woody Harrelson. You know, yeah. recently, Jeff, Champions. Yeah. Is, and you know, within the movie Champions, they actually go to play the championship in Winnipeg. Nice. And my friend and guy on my coaching staff, Mike Rainbow, still finds the confetti <laughs> from the championship scene at the University of Winnipeg gym. He wow, that's showed me incredible. a picture uh, the other day. Winnipeg has so much happening, so much action. That's a big time sports town. It is. Here's uh, Shea. Gets it, steps back, puts it up. It's good. He definitely gets the Silky Smooth Award for this Canada team. Yeah, he plays at his own speed. You can't speed him up. And he creates really good shots. Halliburton's pass gets away. Alexander Walker going to go all the way. And Edwards went in for the block. Canada keeps it. And Barrett gets the contact as he goes up. 52.6 seconds left in the third quarter. USA down nine. Could be double digits after this. Concerned looks on the faces of the USA coaches. Looks like pretty good D to me. Yeah, again, give Barrett credit because he attacked the rim. 
you're rewarded many times when you finish strong to the rim by drawing a foul. In this case, he did, even though we've seen much stronger contact on other plays throughout the game. But Jeff, down the other end, Halliburton throws a pass into traffic. You'd like to see the USA work together to get to the second side of a play and bring Edwards into it. They've, they've done it at different times against different opponents. When your team is struggling to really create together, sometimes it helps to get to the second side of a play in actions. Final minute, the third quarter. Melvin Edgem in the game, guarding Reeves. That's a tough assignment. Edgem's a great defender. Yeah, Reeves uses There's his body. So creates the, the step back jump shot. Yeah, you can see uh, General Martin E. Dempsey there, re-elected chairperson of USA Basketball back in 2021, still here. Alexander Walker to Brooks. Brooks pulls up and misses that shot. A chance for the USA right at the end of the quarter. Edwards, maybe not the best shot. Brooks gets it off and hits the backboard. Edwards must have thought maybe there wasn't enough time. He took it with a few seconds. Anyway, 91-82, Canada on top of USA at the end of three. And as we prepare to look at the numbers, Jeff, Canada with 22 assists compared to USA 14. And the good ball movement has led to 13 for 27 from three, 48% compared to five for 14 for the USA. Just like the Germany game, we saw the opponent have the better of the action and create an advantage here. Once again, the United States will be playing from behind going into the fourth quarter. Well, tremendous plays by Dylan Brooks. Shea Gilgis Alexander now also up there. Big numbers. That's always going to be the case with him. He's got 22. Brooks has 26. Powell gets out there and does the dirty work, doesn't he? He definitely does. And the captain, Kelly Olenek, hitting that three-pointer. He's got eight points. Well, scan in that QR code, that barcode, and you can get the FIBA Basketball World Cup app in your smartphone for all the news, videos, results, stats. What's Chip doing up there? Look, he's got a phone. It's amazing. I mean, of all the talents, Chip I think that one takes the cake. Never ceases to amaze us, Jeff. There's always something new that he's doing. There is, uh, these guys are sitting right in front of us, in fact. I wish they'd turn around. Pal Gasol. There you are. I'm going to try to, yeah, there we are. Hey, I'm a yeah, photo bomb, everybody. Pal Gasol, Luis Scola. Carmelo Anthony, best seats in the house. Sue Bird as well. I mean, you talk about Gasol and Scola, especially the World Cup moments. Jeff, They're who incredible. wins one on one? I don't know head-to-head -head. and then you got Carmelo who played for that team in 2006 that got to the podium for the USA now they were able to bounce back from the upset by Greece Jeff, in the look, semifinal look at Brooks and Bridges arm wrestling at the elbow Edgem trying to guard Portis and he's called for a foul Watch this. Hmm. Edgem wants the elbow call, but Portis just got wide. He didn't really use it for leverage. Edgem was into his body on the play.
I mean, Edgem is a big guy, strong, and it just makes you appreciate how big Portis is. Yeah. He's a load, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is. So Ludor goes out, Kelly Olenek comes back in. Interesting seeing Boniface Indong over there on the bench for Canada, part of the coaching staff. So it's Alexander Walker, Gilgis Alexander, Edgem, Olenek, and Brooks. Here's Edgem missing that one. Chance to get closer for the Americans, for the USA. Reeves. Had some rebounds to miss. USA doubling Shea Gillis Alexander, sending a second defender to him, scrambling the game, getting it out of his hands. Olenek. Edgem scrapping, passes it back out. And Alexander Walker again, and there is Olenek. And not to top it off, he's fouled. Well, Big Jeff, play. Jeff, if there is a possession that symbolizes the struggles for Team USA defensively, this is it. They doubled Shea Gidges Alexander to get him out and get the ball out of his hands. They force a miss, and they just struggle to rebound. They give up two offensive rebounds and then foul Olenek as he's laying it in. Brunson. Oh, kind of loses his footing, turns it over. And now Canada turn it over. Edgem's pass goes out of bounds. And this is a really good timeout from Coach Kerr here, trying to reorganize things. 8.42 to go, you're down 10. They need to be more efficient, and they need to get defensive stops. The bronze is at stake. Which team is getting to the podium after this game? Which team will get third place? Take a look at the graphic there. 14 assists, 11 turnovers for the United States. 22 assists, six turnovers for Canada. More highlights from Dylan Brooks. Well, Dylan Brooks really set the tone today for Canada with everything, doing everything. There's Carmelo Anthony. I'm sure he's appreciating uh, the talent that's on the display today and the effort. And Bridges bumped. So Halliburton back into the game. And you can see the first play out of the timeout is to try to create something for Anthony Edwards. Bridges attacks the closeout, gets to the free throw line. But we really need to see the United States dig in and get some stops defensively, finishing possessions with defensive rebounds. This is the key for them to turn this game. Bridges matched up with Shea Gilgis Alexander. Here's the hustle. Great work, but Bridges couldn't quite chase it down. It creates an opportunity, and Canada turned it over. Edwards again 
drives, passes to Halliburton. It's good. And Big again, three. Jeff, USA in transition. The stops and rebounding are so critical for this team. Can Canada hold on here? It's going to be Brooks driving in. Mall of Asia Arena erupting. Here's Reeves. He's going to take it all the way. Canada do not want to use their timeout. Here is great defense, but he's whistled for the foul. Reeves not happy about this call. Look. I mean, there's plenty of physical contact, but it's not a bad foul, Jeff. Well, it's a good foul. What about putting his arm on his back there? Is that when he blew it? Yeah, I, I think again, that was maybe a little bit too much. He went over the line, but again, it stops the break. Your pickup point, he's going for the eight second backcourt call, but your defensive ball pressure slows them down. The USA, Canada need to do it more. Pressure these guards. Alexander Walker. Ooh. Here's Reeves. Anthony Edwards. Oh, steps back. Is that an ankle breaker? Here's Holly Burton. You can count it. A three-pointer. And the USA have tied it. Look at that. The USA fan section. Is that Tyrese's dad? Maybe. <laughs> Look at Sue Bird and Carmelo Anthony. Of course the camera finds the USA Stars. USA Stars celebrating this run. Again, a great timeout called by Coach Kerr. Halliburton back into the game. They go to Anthony Edwards. And again, a flurry, but it's sparked by the defense and getting out in transition. Great lessons here for the USA, how to play their style in the future World Cups and FIBA games. So they're loving it. USA battling back. Finally, uh, I think some relief in the crowd here. Not seeing the best for them today, but now it's anybody's game. Just under seven minutes to go. Twelve to three, fourth quarter start for the United States. Canada fans also getting up, trying to get their team across the finish line. Long spell they played in Jakarta. They traveled here to the Mall of Asia. USA played all their games in this arena. Okay, back to Barrett. Now Brooks. And R.J. Barrett turns it over. Bridges takes it away. It goes all the way down. He gets blocked by Brooks, who couldn't stay in bounds. <laughs> Good effort by Brooks. That was an outstanding block. Bridges tried to se se step to the side. And on the multiple effort, second ever play, Brooks knocked it away. There's Edwards. It's good. USA in front. So again, you can see Edwards attack the switch, got the matchup he wanted with Powell, and just went one on one. Big bucket, Ant Man. Blue Dort. Short. Dort was short, and here comes the USA. Great rebound from Bridges. So now they're just targeting. Bridges in the corner. Barrett able to tap it over to Shea, who's not going to take no for an answer. He's going up. He misses. But there's Dort hustling down. Great hustle play. Lou Dort 
with the putback. Tie game. Reeves fouled by Shea Gilgis Alexander. That was the previous play where Lou Dort put it back in, hustled down the floor. So what's interesting now, Jeff, as these teams target matchups and switch small, small screens or try to attack the five in a switch, now they're running second defenders. The USA did it towards Shea Gilgis Alexander, and now Canada did it. Brooks ran a second defender at Edwards. In those scramble situations, let's see which team is able to create the better shots and make the better plays. Brooks drives, banks it in, where they go to the leading score, and he delivers again. Halliburton into the paint. Over to Bridges, back to Edwards, Portis, open. And the foul, is it called on Brooks, or Bridges rather? Bridges crashing the offensive boards, climbed on the arm. You can see he was holding Dylan Brooks as they were battling for position. Hart's coming back into the game. And now here's an interesting sub because the USA has five perimeter players on the floor. What time is it, Mike? Winning time, Jeff. Now they have a great scramble lineup. Barrett misses the open three. Rebounding will be the challenge for the small lineup here, but they'll be able to scramble if they double Gilgis Alexander. Oh, boy. Oh, Mikael Bridges. He's been making that shot all tournament long. Now RJ goes hard to the basket, and this time is rewarded. Canada back in front. So USA call timeout. Look at look at RJ. Not going to settle this time. He's going to drive. But again, in transition, look at Reeves just backing up all the way into the paint. They're not stopping the ball early enough with a pickup point, but his teammates can come over and help level off the ball earlier by putting bodies on them. So there's got to be more teamwork and transition defense to stop these really great attacking guards. See, USA being uh, three pointers per quarter. Well, this was Canada really gave themselves that early lead with the six threes in the yeah, first. The defensive breakdowns where they pulled in too much. The USA has done a much better job covering the three-point line, especially here in the fourth quarter, have not surrendered any three-point makes. But now it comes down to efficient execution for the next four minutes. Canada does not have any fouls to give. The United States have one. Here comes Halliburton. Reeves going to take on Shea Gilgis Alexander. Puts it up and scores. Wow. wow. He wanted a foul as well, but didn't get it. So again, they target Reeves. They stay in double two on the ball, and it's a scramble. Bridges deflected that. Goes to Brooks. 
And Brooks short this time, but good work. Powell does the little things, doesn't he? But this is where the size will be an advantage for Canada with Powell out there. Chocolate down to four. Ooh. Look at that. Traveling on Shea. Yeah, it's just kind of, yeah. Good call. So USA with a chance to go back in front. Halliburton steps back that short. It's short and it falls to Lou Dort. Wow. And Barrett has turns it over again. Quick pass to Hart. Give the assist to Halliburton. Halliburton, head up across half court, sees the play. Hart flashes to the rim and a really athletic finish. Barrett, big time. He puts his team back in front. Super fan likes it. Edwards gets out of trouble, gives it back to Halliburton, now has it back. To Bridges in the corner, good! And he's fouled! Whoa! What a big time shot for Mikhail Bridges. So he took away his landing space. And you see the USA and Canada both doing a great job getting into the paint, creating paint touch threes. Barrett just too much contact as he contested through his body. Jeb, it's really interesting to see the players and the teams respond to the early double. The second defender sent at Shea Gilgis Alexander and does Anthony not, Edwards. Does not make the free throw. Here's Shea, back to Brooks for three, good! Canada, back in front! Who's gonna answer the call for the USA? Edwards, not this time. Bridges knocks it back out for another chance. Oh. And wow. Edwards drives in and scores. Just right through the teeth of the defense, extension at the rim, outstanding. I mean, he gets the points, but that was Bridges that went in for the rebound, tapped it back out. Brooks drives, puts it up, and earns the trip to the line. Chance of MVP. MVP is that for for Brooks? <laughs> I don't think Los Angeles Laker fans after the Memphis series this year would be chanting MVP for Brooks. So they are 15 for 16 from the free throw line so far in the game. And Brooks is Zero for zero. I'm sorry. Two oh, a big miss for Brooks. Not a good time to be missing free throws. They shot him so well today. He ties it at 107-107. He's got 32 points, Dylan Brooks. Edwards again, leading USA in scoring. Passes to Halliburton. He's open, misses it badly. 
Now Canada in the final minute can reclaim the lead. Can Shea Gilgis Alexander get to the rim? Here he is, he fades, good! Now Canada back in front. Look at that. Edwards. Tough shot. And look at the battle for the board. It's Brooks, of course it is. His fourth rebound is a huge rebound. And no doubt, hard with the foul. Look at this, that is ice. Where is it running? From the true north, Canada. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say in the veins. <laughs> now, Brooks needs both free throws to really put the USA in a tough spot. Makes the first. And remember, if you're Canada, you do not want to foul the three-point shooter at the other end. We've already fouled Bridges once today from behind the arc. And takes his time and makes both. Has a look at the USA bench and runs back down the court, play defense. Final seconds, what will the USA do? Down four, Reeves. Pump fake, gets blocked. Gets it back, puts it up. They stay with it. Bridges is fouled by R.J. Barrett. Unbelievable work rate for Bridges. Just does not give up. So now the USA does have a timeout to work with here. Is it possible Bridges makes the first? And, and they, they intentionally, intentionally miss. missed the second. What would Sue Bird do, I wonder? Let's ask her. <laughs> and I think the communication from Coach Kerr and the USA coaches is make the first, miss the second. We've got Portis and Walker Kessler Jr. in the rebound. Yeah, that would be 100% certainty. And here comes oh, Edie. The counter was Zach Eady. Again, the chess game between coaches for this free throw positioning. Is it checkmate yet? It's getting close. They're boxing the USA in. I feel like a pawn in all of this. He makes the first. Now, Edwards, is he going to be allowed to check in? And he cannot. No, he's got to wait till after. And of course, they're going to miss it intentionally. Well, there, Edwards wants to check in, but rules are rules. Bridges asking Coach Kerr which side to miss it to. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh, a good miss. The USA got it. Bridges from the corner. You have got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. A play for the ages at the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Bridges does the unthinkable. Ties the game. Point two seconds left. I have never seen it. Unreal. And Jeff, no one blocked out the free throw shooter for Canada. Bridges unchecked. Runs the ball down alertly to the corner. Buries the big shot. Amazing. Look at it again. 0 0.6, okay? 0 0.6. 0 0.6, we correct the time. Tell them, tell them, tell them 0 0.6. 0 0.6 seconds. 0 0.6. So Canada are going to call timeout, and with 0.6 left, they can advance the ball, right? So yes. they'll get a good, they'll, they'll potentially get a shot here to, to yeah. win it. Yeah. So if you're Jordy Fernandez and staff, you're drawing up one of your late game go-to plays. They have enough time for a catch and shoot situation. 
And again, one of the things we love about the NBA are these late game plays that coaches will draw up. And now we see it here in the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And it's... Uh... But again, let's give Coach Kerr and staff credit. They took the risk. They took the gamble. You're down four. You're playing the situation. They have a timeout, but watch here. Brooks, double teams on Kessler. There's no one to block out Bridges. He tracks down his own miss. Did that bank in? Let's take a look. Look at this. Still can't tell, but you know, Bridges had that extra effort play, remember, when he was fouled by Barrett. Yep. And that that is just extraordinary, that man right there. Bridges is just unreal. Now. So look for a curl and a pop out of this formation here. Dort is in the post. Olenek is also a stretch five shooting three. You've got Barrett, Shea Gildress Alexander, and Olenek arced around the three-point line. All capable three-point shooters. Brooks inbounds it to Olenek. He gets it off. Oh, he almost made it. It's a great look. It's just a little long for Kelly Olenek for the medal. And instead, we've got overtime. A little reminiscent of Davis Bertans taking that shot for Latvia against Germany. From a similar spot, and it looked good online. And Kelly Olenek couldn't believe it didn't go in, but Canada have hit plenty of threes today. You can see 15. Yeah, they, they've done a great job offensively, and I love their 26 assists, but after a strong fourth quarter, USA assist numbers up to 21 assists, 11 turnovers. Rebounding, USA still commands 40 to 34 advantage. Points in the paint, 48 to 40 for the USA. Bench points, 41-19 for the United States Look at as well. this, look at it. It looks good, doesn't it? Jeff, it was right on line. Just a little long, Kelly Olenek. I mean, oh man, it hurts me watching not go down. That not go down. Right on line, great look. Look at <laughs> Size of relief. Well, you know what he's saying. What do you think, and Coach? Look at this. What do you think, Coach Few was thinking when that ball was sailing through the air towards the rim? That's on my the guy, but I hope he misses it. <laughs> Coach Few is patriotic. Meanwhile, Bridges, an extraordinary. That's the play of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's Don't unbelievable. Even... It's amazing. It's one of the top plays in the World Cup we've seen, and it, it never give up, never quit on a game. There's always a chance, and great heart from the USA. Just an unbelievable, I, I still can't believe what we watched. It just goes to show it ain't over till it's over. And uh, we start the overtime. Canada and USA knotted at 111. Shea Gilgis Alexander comes right out. USA staying with their small five perimeter lineup. Halliburton gets it back, hands it off to Hart. Edwards tries to turn around jumper. Some tough shots there for the United States. You like they're working hard. Got to try to create some easier, high percentage shots. I like uh, the creativity of Reeves in that situation. If they could get him the ball. Barrett gets into the lane, 
puts it up. That's off. But Brooks bats it over to Dort, and Canada maintain possession. New 14. Shea! Oh, for three! Was that an ankle breaker? Oh, that was, Jeff. And that's a big bucket. 5-0 start for Canada here. USA, important possession. And a foul called on Shea. Jeff, that'll be his fourth. Look at this. Oh, oh gosh. I mean, listen, you can't you can't complain about the defense of Bridges. Well, but that was just pure what excellence. You, and what you love about Shea in that situation, he usually plays at a steady, methodical pace. That time he picked it up, made a quick move, created that separation with a jab step. Bridges lost his footing. Hart gets one of them back, pulls the team to within four. Brunson's going to come back into the game. Hart only makes one of two, so Bridges will have to wait. Foul called on Hart. Hey Jeff, that's tough with Hart fouling out. Brunson in. Hart gave his team great effort today. Ten points, one rebound, two assists, solid D. Well, Shea's been the man in overtime. He's got 30 now. <laughs> 31 and also has the 11 assists, six rebounds. They can't afford to lose him in the overtime, though. He's that important, even with three minutes remaining. Here we go, Reeves over to Bridges. Brunson just got off the bench, misses. Reeves gets it back. And the foul called on Powell. And that is just hustle from the USA. Well, it's good work from Powell. You can't fault the effort there. No, very good effort. Reeves makes the first Grant Hill nervous. Knows what these moments are like. Had so many big games as a player. Now the managing director of this USA national team. Having uh, succeeded Jerry Colangelo in that role. Canada taking their time. Dylan Brooks goes up and makes another. He just has been stunning today. 36 points. So that, that's not what Canada wants to do is stop the clock with fouls. So another opportunity here for, for Edwards. You see. Here's a great play again using his body Brooks creates a separation for the shot But the challenge with Edwards is directing him into the screen into the switch. He he's rejects it there earns the foul He had made four of six and now he's five of seven Oh uh, Just gets one of two important defensive stops now for the USA USA not making as many free throws today, are they? No. They've had some games where they've been really good. Here's Bridges trying to put the shackles on Shea Gilgis Alexander. Look at Brooks driving in and fouled by Brunson. 
He has just been enormous today. I mean, I, I'm really, you know, don't even talk about all the silliness that's fun with him. He's just been a great leader for this team. Yeah, he's come out with determination. He's come out with, with a swagger. And you can see the toughness. But the problem for the United States is when Reeves or Brunson switch on to Gilgis Alexander or Brooks, they're struggling to get one-on-one -on -one stops. Brooks just bullied Brunson right to the rim to draw the foul. 10-4 to four in overtime for Canada. Now he makes one of two, but Dort gets it back. So the complications continue for USA. Shea drives in, misses, and Anthony Edwards picks up the ball before it goes out of bounds. USA need points and stops and, and most untimely turnover. Not the type of mistake you would expect to see in this situation. Well, the play was a little disjointed without good spacing as Halliburton was just hanging out near half court. That allowed them to double team Edwards. And then as Bridges tried to drive, floor was crowded, turnover. Shea loses it. And it goes out of bounds off of Brunson, who almost had a big steal. Look at that. Oh, unlucky because it went right through the legs of Dort. Now, Jeff, there's 0.8 seconds. The United States has to defend without fouling and rebound. Dylan Brooks. Did not get it off in time. Good attempt. And Halliburton goes sitting down on the bench. So it's Portis, Edwards, Bridges, Brunson, and Reeves. Well, after what we saw at the end of regulation, all bets are off. <laughs> There's still a long way to go in this one. USA need buckets. Can they get Reeves free for a three or is Brunson? No, Brunson's going to go deep. And Barrett forces the ball to go off of Bridges and out of bounds. A couple of turnovers here for the USA, undermining their chances of a comeback. Thirteen turnovers for the USA today. Shea Gilgis, Alexander Barrett, top of the key. Good! That might just be it. The dagger with 43.8 seconds remaining. Get great awareness from Shea Gilgis, Alexander. Penetrates. Draws all the attention, and Barrett relocates to the top of the key. Big shot for Canada. 37 points for Brooks, 23 for Barrett, 31 for Shea Gilgis Alexander, who also has 12 assists. The big three stepping up and delivering for Canada. And after the amazing finish to regulation, to tie it, it's been all Canada in overtime. 13 to four with 43.8 seconds to go. The captain Kelly Linick really happy. Canada, first time ever reaching the semifinals of the FIBA Basketball World Cup and a chance to get their first ever medal in this uh, terrific competition. Some long looks on the faces of the USA players as they come back out onto the court. But with 43.8 seconds, Mike, still crazier things have happened. Well, we just saw crazy at the end of the regulation. 
Canada in position. And Reeves stepped out of bounds. So again, Jeff, it's just the, you know, both teams have the same opportunity in overtime and the United States execution, three turnovers in a row. Mike. His foot must have just been out a little. Incredible, but I mean, did you ever see the time when USA would go back to back FIBA Basketball World Cups without getting to the podium? Well, they have to really reevaluate where things are. And the foul, an unsportsmanlike foul has been called on Portis. So it's going to be a tough ending for this uh, USA group. Jeff, if you look at the effort completely in all of the games, the USA has had some really good moments, but the idea of simply outscoring international teams at the Olympics or the World Cup, that has to stop. That's not going to be a recipe for success for the United States. They have to have a team that is committed to defend. Well, Coach K, I mean, that was his modus Operandi, wasn't it? I mean, and it was like this is why they were it's successful. Defense. It's not just superstar players like that's a big deal, but you've got to win the game and you've got to commit to defend. Part of that is finishing possessions with defensive rebounding. Blocking out is fundamental to any level of successful basketball, no matter the talent. And we've seen teams, Serbia, Germany. It's so. Not Portis has to go because he had uh, picked up an unsportsmanlike earlier. Second unsportsmanlike for him, unfortunately. But the talent is not the issue for the United States. It's building a team, a core, that knows how to play together and knows how to respond to the challenges and adversity in a game together. But it's also the physicality, giving up your body and commitment to defend. Lou Dort, and they turn it over. So 10 points down, 26.9 seconds left. Quick three, steal or foul. Quick three, and he gets that. The bank is open here on Sunday in Manila. So that gets it back to seven. And now, ooh, close as Halliburton goes for the steal. Don't go away, folks. We've already seen USA come up with one miracle at the end of regulation. Okay, so they're going to go review something. We'll be quiet. USA Challenge. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys here? This one. Okay, the ball changed the direction. Okay, but let's see if we have any other angle. Maybe this on the top. This is the touch. Okay, so he's touching the time. Should be. It was it was 22.5, so 21.5 seven seconds to pass. So we confirm the decision. It's a baseline. It's baseline. It's sideline. Okay. No base. Baseline. Baseline. Okay. It is baseline. It's baseline. Okay. In the corner. Seven seconds to pass. So our magic number is. Uh, uh, made the calculation. Okay. We confirm the decision. Well, just barely grazed the finger, but maybe if he doesn't get his finger on it. But I think this was more of a timeout for Coach Kerr to organize the team's defense. Hmm. And he had the, the challenge, so he might as well use it. Hmm. And Brooks fouled from behind by Brunson. So not much time goes off the clock. The kind of got to make free throws. Yeah. 
Well, the crowd thinks that Brooks is the MVP of this game. That's for sure. As he steps up to the steps up to the line. And Steve Kerr. You know, there are no guarantees. He knew that. He had experienced that four years ago. You know, in USA, we're fortunate to get away with the win over Turkey in the first round. Right, but Jeff, this is a new roster, a new team, and they finished seventh in China in 2019. We're, we're playing third, fourth. How about this? Nope. That's going to be it. Canada, maybe their greatest moment in international basketball, the men's team have come out the first time ever making it this far and they have reached the podium they have won the third place game against the united states in the battle of the americas so congratulations to them and uh wow what a moment for canadian basketball great moment for canada the country is on the rise more nba players than ever more players overseas than ever, more players playing in the United States colleges than ever, and a national team that's done better than ever here at the World Cup. Great for Canada basketball. And USA, I mean, they played hard, but like you say, they'll just have to go back and reevaluate. And when you consider, you know, who they beat in this competition, um, they came out, they beat New Zealand on opening night. That was a tough game, really. Uh, for a good 25 minutes. They beat Greece, they beat Jordan, but then they had a tough time against Montenegro. They had a tough, they lost to Lithuania, they blew out Italy, and then they lost that incredible game against Germany in the semifinals. So look at the emotion by Dylan Brooks and uh, to see what it means to him. I, I can't imagine Dylan Brooks playing any better than he did today. He was truly inspirational. Shea Gilgis Alexander also was outstanding, as was RJ Barrett in, in winning time. I mean, he came out and made plays. This, this Canada team is good. You know, 39 points for Dylan Brooks. That is a signature, signature moment in his career. You can see Pau Gasol standing courtside with uh, Luis Scola. And Mikhail Bridges, uh, I got no issues with how he played. <laughs> he was no. outstanding in this tournament. No. And Austin Reeves, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow for the USA. They came here expecting to get the title. Well, the expectations are always high. They've been outplayed. And I think this is the point that, you know, you always want to just take ownership of results. USA has to examine their playing style. But give Canada credit here. This They've earned this win. They survived the late scare, the amazing finish to get to overtime, and then Canada took control of the game. So a great moment there. You see Rowan Barrett, father of RJ, and the former Olympian uh, for Canada. Also the Supremo with uh, the Canada men's program. You know, Kelly Olenek, the captain, you know, going back to 2010 when he played for that Canada team, it, it didn't go well for them, did it? You know, no. I mean, this is, it didn't go well for them at the last World Cup either in China. But they were able to load up to get, you know, some of these players here this time. And as expected, they delivered. They definitely delivered. And again, it goes in unison with the rise of Canada basketball in other areas throughout the world. So this is it's a great uh, benchmark for everyone to say, hey, look, we have accomplished something at the World Cup. We got a bronze medal. Players are doing really well. Jamal Murray, not here, but part of an NBA championship team with the Denver Nuggets. And as we say, so many players playing overseas, so many players playing in the USA, in colleges, the rising Canadian Elite Basketball League. So many positive things happening for basketball in Canada for the game. Let's look at who they beat in this tournament. I mean, they ran the gauntlet. They played France. They beat them 95-65. I mean, that's unheard of. Winning against a quality opponent like that, that put them on their way. They beat Lebanon 128-73. to 
They beat Latvia, who have been one of the sensations, one of the stories of this tournament, 101-75. Brazil, against their America's opponent, they got they came up short, 69-65, and that, that put their backs against the wall. They had to actually beat Spain uh, to clinch their place. And look at that. You've got Dylan Brooks awarded with the TCL MVP award, and I'm really happy for him. What an amazing game. Signature game in his career, one of them anyway, probably to this point, and I'm guessing there's going to be some more on the way for him. Uh, they also, so they beat the defending champion Spain. They beat Slovenia and Luka Doncic, and then uh, after coming up and losing to Serbia, they bounced back with this performance against the USA. It has been a magnificent journey, full of adversity, would you say, for Canada? I mean, they've... When you survive the group of death like that, one of the groups of death, and then you march on and you get to the podium, that is that is something else. Yeah, they won their way out, and that, you know, preparation set them up well here in the final phase. Congratulations to Jordy and his staff. Really well done here at Manila, and I'm sure back home, throughout all the provinces of Canada. Everyone really, really proud of what this national team has done. And now this is gonna fire up everybody in Canada looking ahead to next year. They're just gonna be so excited about going to the Olympics knowing that they've, they've pulled this off. And now the, the, the big question will be taking it one step further, you know? Why not? Go, well, get, go get the crown. Yeah, you go you, get the gold. You figure you add in Jamal Murray. That's another player that can take it to the next level. Uh, and again, you know, this core has been really, really good here. This core is solid and it's young. And you look forward for a, a bright future with Canada basketball. So the award ceremony is now going to take place. The podium, the so you can see Ingo Weiss, the Cuban treasurer, is going to be coming out, and as, long as, as well as Alfredo S. Panlilio of the Philippines Basketball Federation, the president there on the left. So Canada are going to come out. Ingo Weiss isn't down there yet, but he will be shortly, I would assume. So Kelly Olenek. Lou Dort. What do you think about Olenek and his uh, captain? I'm very, very happy for Kelly. You know, during my time around the Celtics, he was the number one draft pick. So I got a chance to spend some time with him. I've gotten to be close with some of the Gonzaga guys through the years who he's very good friends with. He's a really first class guy and he's a great representative for Canada basketball. Camp Luke's BC native. Great captain. Yeah, he's been really a big part of this program. Well, you got Lou Dort out there. You got Montreal's Mikhail, finest Lou Alexander Dort. Walker, Shea Gilgis Alexander, his cousin. Uh, Melvin Edgen, one of the Canadian guys that's always been there to answer the call for the national team. Hugely a uh, big success in Europe. Powell, obviously, is uh, indispensable for this team. You love, that he does. you love to see these guys have their moment. They've earned it. R.J. Barrett, uh, you know, you talk about having some talent. This is a team that is very good. Kyle Alexander didn't get in today, but he's a solid player. Zach Eady, what about the future with him? Big potential, and Phil Scrub following him again, uh, a loyal servant to this to this uh, Canada team whenever they're playing. And of course, Dylan Brooks is a uh, signature moment for him in that Canada jersey. It's been wonderful to watch him come out and have some success. And Trey Bell Haynes as well getting the the bronze medal, Jordan and uh, Fernandez. Yeah, I'm really happy for Jordy. 
you know, he's he's one of the good ones. He's worked really hard, rising in his NBA career and now getting an opportunity with Canada. He's done a fantastic job with this roster. Again, I think all of his time around the Spanish national team as an assistant player development guy, all the way back to Celia Slovenia in the Eurobasket 2013. Wow. You know, he's come a long way, and just congratulations to all of the players, all the coaches. They've done a fantastic job for Canada. So third place for Canada at the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023. They came, they saw, and they will leave with that bronze medal. And there's Dylan Brooks. Again, I'm guessing he will be in the postgame presser, but maybe he won't. Maybe it'll be uh, Olenek. Maybe it'll be the whole team. All for one, one for all? Or one for all, all for one. What is it? All for one, one for all, three Musketeers. Here we have the 12 Musketeers, Jeff. Yes. Canada. Terrific. Terrific afternoon for them. And in a game that was just, you thought it was over effectively until Mikhail Bridges had the incredible uh, last sequence there to intentionally miss the free throw, the second one, chase it down and go to the go to the corner to hit the three-point shot <laughs> to tie it. I mean, I think that remains the play of the game, even though the USA lost. So again, uh, Looking back at the fourth quarter here. I think we're still in the fourth, or is, it in the, is this in the overtime? Yeah, that's in the fourth quarter. So Halliburton hitting that three-pointer. It so often happens, Mike, doesn't it, that the team that comes back enforces overtime doesn't get it done in overtime yeah it's tough you know sometimes you waste so much energy or let's say expend so much energy during your comeback such an emotional moment and then you've got to be able to stabilize it and continue to produce it was all Canada in overtime let's don't forget USA a little bit short today no excuses but without Brandon Ingram for the second consecutive game uh, without Jaron Jackson, who is ill, not able to play, without Paolo Banquero, who is ill. So they were missing some, some key pieces. And that might have shown itself a little bit, but you can't take anything away from Canada. I mean, they, no. were, they, it, were, they were excellent. They made the plays when they had to. Canada won this game, and they really outproduced the USA. There's the amazing finish. That was incredible there. Unbelievable. Even Steve Kerr broke out in a smile. Hopefully they'll be able to hold on some good moments from this World Cup. I think they will. I think there's so many positives for them to learn about what it's going to take to be successful, what it's going to take to win. And again, sometimes that's difficult to deal with, hard to deal with, but the best thing is take ownership and work to improve. Well, the Mall of Asia arena was humming today. Third place and a medal was at stake. And the USA came out determined to get something. But Canada, in their first ever appearance, making it this far, make it a memorable finish. They get the bronze.